Hi, my name is Leslie Barringer and in today's video I want to show you how to use PowerPoint's Morph Transition feature to help you make more interesting and engaging presentations. I think you'll be surprised just how easy it is. So Morph can be used in lots of ways to add interest and emphasis to your content and make the presentation memorable for all the right reasons. In this video, we'll be looking at Morph with text, shapes and images or pictures. Here's a short example of how you can use Morph to liven up a presentation and keep your audience awake and waiting for the next slide. We're going to start with text and first of all we'll add the text. So insert text box and let's type move the text. We'll just resize the text a little bit. Move the text. Okay. Now we need to duplicate the slide, so we right click on the slide before, duplicate and we get another one exactly the same. Now on this slide we're going to move the text down to the bottom here or anywhere in fact, but this will be good. Make the text box smaller so we're neat. And then we're going to add the transition. So we're going to click on the Transitions tab, select Morph, and this will add the Morph transition. And as you can see already, when we go from slide one to slide two and preview, you'll see the text move. What we can also do with text is to enlarge it, and that's particularly useful for emphasis so again we'll go to the last slide we used right click duplicate the slide and then we're going to move the slide into the middle so we've got more room enlarge the text as you would any other text we're just going to adjust the text box so it fits in nicely and center the text box Remember, because we duplicated the slide before, we've already got the morph transition copied into this slide too. So if we click on the slide preview, we'll be able to see the text grow and also move. As well as moving and enlarging text, we can also fly it on and off the slide. So we're going to go ahead and duplicate the slide again. Lots of duplications here with the morph feature. So a tip here on the display in the window is to actually minimize, make the slide smaller within the window because we're going to work a little bit on the outside of the slide. So I'm using this area down here where you can enlarge and minimize the size of the slide. So we want to move the text and I'm going to move it off straight ahead. As you can see it's moving into the space outside the slide. And again if we press the preview you'll see the text moving nicely off to the right there. If we want to move the text back on we just follow the same process, so duplicate, move the text back on, and check preview. Perfect. If you do want to fly content on, it's worth noting that you always need the content waiting outside the slide before, ready to fly onto the slide. So for example, on slide four here, we've got the text here at the side waiting to move on on the next transition. If we want to fly on some new text, we need to make sure that it's available from the slide before. So we're going to add insert text box and type fly 
in new text. Make that a little bit larger. 32, I think will be fine. And then we can go ahead with the duplication. So right click, duplicate, and now we've got the next identical slide and we can take the text in to where we want it to sit. Okay, so if we click on preview, we get the text flying in nicely from this corner. Experiment with where the text flies in from and where it finishes up depending on what effect you're aiming for. For example, if we go to the slide before where it's waiting and change the position and then go to the current uh, slide and change the position there too, we'll see what a difference it makes. Perfect. So as you can see, it's quite a simple process. It's a case of duplicating a slide, making the changes and choosing the morph transition. Okay, so let's move on to shapes. We'll add a shape and use the morph transition. So new slide, we'll go for blank again and we're going to insert a shape Let's use a circle. Okay. Now with shapes, we can change the size, the color and position, but not the actual shape itself. So basically we can't go, we can't morph from a circle into a triangle, into a rectangle, etc. So as we did with the text, we can move the circle. So duplicate, move the shape, add the morph transition, and you'll see the shape move. Obviously, I'm keeping things really simple here, but there are so many uses for the morph transition, and the more you experiment, the more uses you'll find for it. Let's duplicate again, and we can change the size of the circle, and you can get some great effects by enlarging over large. Let's have a look what that would look like. Perfect. If we want to change the colour, we duplicate, select which colour we want, and then let's see what happens. Using position, size and colour changes can be a really useful way of highlighting particular parts of your message in your presentation. So remember, duplicate, make changes and then choose morph. If you do fly content in, it needs to be waiting on the slide before. And if you really want to emphasize the message, let's go duplicate, change the color of the keyword, and even the size. Brilliant. There really are so many things you can do. But for now, let's leave the text and the shapes and move on to images and pictures. First, we'll insert a new slide and we'll stick with blank. Then we'll insert an image. I'll switch off design ideas for the moment as we don't need them. We do have another video that covers the design ideas feature for 365. When using morph and images or text and shapes for that matter, you can get a zoom effect and a panning effect. 
So at the moment you can see the image is oversized and covering the slide. You can always check what will be visible using the panel on the left and the process is pretty similar to what we've done so far. So a case of duplicate, make change and choose the morph transition. So let's make the picture bigger. Let's size the picture so it's very big and very oversized compared to the slide but we'll move it to one side of the slide and then what we can do on the next slide as you know by now we need to duplicate and then we can actually move the picture to the other side we'll see the edge of the slide there we go and we need to apply the morph transition now when we click preview you'll see that we get a panning effect as if we're actually in the room and gazing around the room at all these people fast asleep and not enjoying the presentation at all. You can also do what I did earlier which is create a zoom effect using the morph transition. So let's go through the process. I'm going to minimize the slide area as we did before and make the picture much larger. Again this is a little bit of guesswork because we can't see through it's not an image with a transparent background but we use the slide organizer over here in the left hand panel to see what we can see. And if we click on the preview we have a look at the guy right at the front who's fast asleep. And there he is again. Perfect. There are many options when formatting pictures and images in PowerPoint and some of them work really well with Morph. So let's have a look at a few. Oh, duplicate the slide and then click on the image right click and go to the bottom format picture and under artistic effects over here we're going to click on the box and have a little look around there are lots of different ones blur is the one that i'm going to have a go at with this because i think it'll work well with the little bit of story that we're working with let's go and preview So not only do we have a guy who's fast asleep, we've zoomed into him, he's now blurred out, which I think helps and would be good to move on to the next part of the story. So let's have a quick recap on what we've done through the video. We inserted some text, moved it around, made the text larger, great for emphasis, learned how to fly the text off, the slide, back on the slide, added some new text, flying in new text. We worked on shapes and again how to move the shapes, resize the shape, change the colour and again add text flying in from the side, editing the text again for emphasis. Then we moved on to images and had a look how we can make a presentation more interesting and engaging using the morph transition to zoom and pan, add the shapes and text as we've seen before, the blur feature. And finally, how morph can add just a little something extra to your presentation and keep your audience awake. Thank you for watching today and good luck using the Morph Transition feature and with your next interesting and engaging presentation.